In the heart of Manchester, the mood around Old Trafford was tense. Once a fortress of thundering chants and unyielding support, the atmosphere had shifted. The stands, once filled with unwavering optimism, now echoed with murmurs of discontent. Eric Ten Hag, the club's manager, felt the weight of every gaze directed his way, heavy with expectation and disappointment. The season had started with promise. Ten Hag arrived with a vision, eager to bring his tactical prowess and innovative style to a club desperate for glory. Yet, as October unfolded, a series of disheartening results had left both fans and board members questioning his capabilities. Each match felt like a step closer to the precipice of disaster. As the sun set on a crisp October evening, the boardroom buzzed with anxious energy. The Manchester United board members had gathered for an emergency meeting, the second in as many days. Whispers filled the air about potential managerial changes, fueled by reports from pundits and the rising dissatisfaction among the fan base. Ten Hag's fate hung in the balance as the clock ticked toward a decision. Inside the meeting room, Ten Hag paced, his thoughts racing. He could still remember the day he accepted the position, the thrill of stepping into a role that had been filled by legends. He had arrived with lofty ambitions, hopes of reigniting the club's storied legacy. But with every disappointing result, the pressure mounted. He could almost hear the voices of supporters echoing in his mind. We want results. As the discussions continued, the board began to align. They acknowledged the challenges Ten Hag faced, injuries that had sidelined key players, a demanding fixture list, and a squad still trying to find its identity. The weight of expectation loomed large, and for some board members, the thought of parting ways with their manager was unsettling. Look at the talent in this squad, one board member argued passionately. They've shown glimpses of brilliance. Sacking him now would only cause more instability. We need a steady hand. Another member hesitated, reflecting on the dwindling attendance and rising frustration among fans. But what if results don't improve? We risk losing the support of our loyal fans entirely. This is Manchester United. We can't afford to be mid-table. Ultimately, after hours of deliberation, a decision was reached. Ten Hag would stay, at least until after the international break. There was a collective sigh of relief in the room, tempered by the knowledge that the margin for error was razor thin. Emerging from the meeting, Ten Hag felt a mixture of relief and renewed determination. He had been granted a lifeline, but he knew he had to make the most of it. He headed to the training ground, ready to rally his players, aware that their spirits had waned after a series of poor performances. As he entered the locker room, he was met with skeptical faces. The players' body language spoke volumes. Their shoulders slumped, their eyes dull with uncertainty. Ten Hag took a deep breath, steeling himself for the task ahead. Listen up, he called out, his voice cutting through the gloom. I know things have been tough, but I believe in each and every one of you. We have the talent to turn this around, starting now. We'll use the international break wisely, work on our tactics, and come back stronger. His words hung in the air, and slowly the players began to nod, exchanging glances that hinted at a flicker of hope. They had seen Ten Hag's passion before, and it sparked something deep within them. With renewed focus, they delved into training, pushing each other harder than before, determined to reclaim their pride. During the break, Ten Hag analyzed every game, dissecting not just his tactics but also the players' mental states. He introduced team-building exercises, encouraging his squad to bond off the pitch. They shared meals, engaged in light-hearted competitions, and began to trust each other again. As the international break drew to a close, the air was thick with anticipation. Ten Hag had implemented a new game plan, emphasizing fluidity and teamwork. He believed that the players needed to feel connected, not just as teammates, but as brothers fighting for a common cause. When they faced their next opponent, a fierce rival in the league, 
The players entered the pitch with a sense of purpose. The stadium was alive with energy, the crowd a mix of excitement and anxiety. As the whistle blew, it was clear that something had shifted. The match was intense, filled with nail-biting moments. United's players displayed a newfound hunger, pressing high and creating opportunities. The crowd roared with every pass, their belief in the team rekindling. However, the first half ended without a goal, and tension mounted as the players regrouped. In the second half, Ten Hag's tactical adjustments began to pay off. They pressed forward, working seamlessly as a unit. In a whirlwind of activity, Manchester United had officially welcomed a fresh face to the squad, the highly rated midfielder Saku Kone. At just 18 years old, Kone had already made a significant impression during training sessions, quickly winning over coaches and fans alike. The excitement surrounding his arrival was palpable. Photographs of him donning the iconic red kit flooded social media, sparking optimism in an otherwise turbulent time for the club. Yet, amid the buzz about Cohn's potential, whispers of discontent emerged from within the squad. Alejandra Garnacho, the promising young winger, was reportedly growing increasingly frustrated under Eric Ten Hogg's management. According to various sources, Garnacho had even offered himself to Barcelona, a move that sent shockwaves through the fan base. While many dismissed this as mere speculation, it highlighted the broader discontent brewing at Old Trafford. Garnacho, who had shown flashes of brilliance, was feeling the strain of a system that seemed to stifle his creativity. With United struggling to find their rhythm, scoring only five goals in the season's opening matches, even the most dedicated players were finding it hard to maintain their spirits. For attackers like Garnacho, who thrived on opportunities to express themselves, the frustration was palpable. As news circulated about Garnacho's alleged discontent, some fans expressed skepticism. After all, the young winger had been a tireless worker, often seen giving his all on the pitch. Many believed that while he may have been frustrated with his lack of starts, the idea that he was actively seeking a move away was exaggerated. Some pundits suggested that the media was simply trying to generate clicks in a slow news cycle, capitalizing on United's current turmoil to stir controversy. Meanwhile, attention turned back to Cohn. His signing was seen as a positive step in a season that had been marred by negativity. The club had clearly shifted focus towards youth, bringing in several promising talents, including Cohn, a striker named Obi Martin, and a center back, Lenny Yoro. This new wave of signings represented a strategic pivot under the new recruitment regime, emphasizing the importance of developing homegrown talent rather than relying solely on big-name signings that had often led to disappointment. Reports indicated that Cohn was already impressing the coaching staff with his skill and maturity. Described as a next big thing in the midfield role, he was recognized not just for his physicality, but for his tactical intelligence. The coaching staff felt that Cohn could play a significant role as the season progressed, potentially earning minutes in crucial matches. Yet, with the season still young and tensions high, discussions about Ten Hag's future loomed large. Some reports suggested that the manager could be on the hot seat if results did not improve quickly. In the same breath, other sources indicated that the club was considering their options, weighing the pros and cons of a managerial change. The contradictory nature of the reports only added to the confusion and unrest among players and supporters alike. As the international break approached, United found themselves at a crossroads. The club had invested heavily in youth, hoping to cultivate a new generation of stars while also navigating the turbulence of the present. Players like Cohn were seen as essential to the future, yet the immediate challenges were clear. If Garnacho's frustrations were valid, how many more players felt similarly disillusioned? As fans eagerly awaited the next match, the atmosphere was a mix of hope and anxiety. Would Cohn rise to the occasion and help turn the tide? Would Garnacho remain loyal despite his frustrations, or would his potential move to Barcelona become a reality? And most importantly, 
How long could Ten Hag hold on to his position as the club's manager if the team continued to falter? The answers to these questions felt as uncertain as the club's future itself. With each passing day, the stakes grew higher, and the narrative around Manchester United became ever more intricate. As fans prepared for the resumption of the season, they clung to the hope that the youthful talent coming through could spark a revival, transforming not just the team's fortunes, but also the spirits of those who wore the iconic red shirt. The stage was set, and as the season continued, the story of Manchester United was far from over. It was a tale of potential, frustration, and the constant quest for glory, a narrative that fans knew all too well. Matthijs De Ligt furiously slammed as clunky Man United star uses the gym too much. Matthijs De Ligt is facing renewed criticism following his awful start to life at Manchester United, with the defender now being told he is spending too much time in the gym. Matthijs De Ligt has been told he has been in the gym too much, with the Manchester United star being branded clunky. De Ligt arrived at Old Trafford in the summer transfer window in a £42 million deal from Bayern Munich. But the Dutchman has struggled to live up to his price tag in the opening part of the season. Having been at fault for two of Porto's goals in the Europa League last week, De Ligt was dropped for the trip to Aston Villa on Sunday. He did have to come on at half-time to replace the injured Harry Maguire, though. There were high hopes for De Ligt when he arrived from Bayern, with the 25-year-old expected to form a partnership with Lissandro Martinez. Instead, he has struggled badly, and former title winner Chris Sutton believes that is down to his body shape. Sutton told the It's All Kicking Off podcast, He's been in the gym too much. I mean, most people need to get in the gym. When he was at Ajax and he came to the fore, not only was he strong, but he was agile, he was mobile. He just looks clunky, doesn't he? Ten Hag played down the move to take De Ligt out of the starting lineup for the draw with Villa on Sunday. The United boss insisted the decision was merely down to rotation and praised De Ligt for his performance once he came on. We have loads of games. We have to rotate the team, the freshness, and I think it was a good decision today. I think the performances from Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans, they were very solid. But also, I think Matthijs De Ligt came in at halftime and was very solid, Ten Hag said. Of course, you take everything into consideration. But there were more reasons. And Johnny Evans, I didn't know if he could come to an end and I would have to sub again. So yeah, it's always about consideration. One for one, for me, was the best idea. This is our fourth clean sheet of this season, and that tells something about the control we have in and out of possession. We are organized very well. In many games so far, we create loads of chances. De Ligt has been facing increasing criticism for his performances, despite Ten Hag's support. Liverpool legend Jamie Carragher called out the struggling United star for his poor positioning in the defeat to Tottenham. I've noticed this with De Ligt and a lot of centre-backs. I don't understand why they don't fill the space and come over. The striker just behind him has got nothing to do with him. That is Martinez's job, Carragher told Sky Sports after that game. It comes from his starting position. I can talk about United's midfield running at the back four. But where's De Ligt? The right-backs come up and look where De Ligt is. You've got to get over. So in every situation in the first half, De Ligt... A player they brought in for huge money is completely out of position. Matthijs de Ligt had arrived at Manchester United with high expectations, hailed as one of Europe's most promising defenders. However, after a tumultuous start to his tenure, those expectations had quickly turned into disappointment and the criticism was growing louder. As fans and pundits scrutinized his performances, one recurring theme emerged. His physicality and gym habits were becoming a point of contention. From the moment he stepped onto the pitch, it was evident that De Ligt was struggling to find his footing. His first few appearances were marred by mistakes, misplaced passes, poor positioning, and a noticeable lack of cohesion with his defensive partners. The once composed player who had shown in the Netherlands and at Ajax now looked uncertain and, at times, overwhelmed by the demands of the Premier League. 
Critics were quick to point out that Delict seemed to rely too heavily on his physical attributes, having spent what many perceived as an excessive amount of time in the gym. Some pundits suggested that while strength training was essential, it appeared to have come at the expense of his agility and finesse. Commentators described him as clunky, struggling to move fluidly during matches, and often appearing one step behind faster, more agile attackers. The narrative surrounding his fitness choices began to take shape. In interviews, former players and analysts speculated that his focus on building muscle had perhaps overshadowed the technical aspects of his game. He's clearly put in the work in the gym, one pundit remarked during a heated discussion on a popular sports show. But he looks cumbersome on the ball. He needs to find the balance between strength and technique. Meanwhile, social media erupted with a mixture of humor and frustration. As Manchester United's headquarters fell into a quieter rhythm during the international break, a palpable mixture of anticipation and unease hung in the air. The hustle and bustle of the training ground, usually alive with the sounds of laughter and competitive banter, gave way to a more contemplative atmosphere. With several key players off on international duty, those remaining were left to grapple with the weight of their club's precarious situation. Leandro Martinez was one of the first to depart, donning the colors of Argentina with pride. His absence was felt deeply. The passionate defender had been a linchpin in United's back line. Alongside him, a few other stars had joined their national teams, eager to represent their countries on the international stage. Yet, amidst the excitement of international fixtures, the shadow of uncertainty loomed large over Old Trafford. In stark contrast, news began to circulate about several players who had withdrawn from international duty due to injuries. Speculation ran rampant. Were these injuries legitimate, or were some players opting to dodge the pressure and scrutiny that came with representing their nation? For the club, it was a double-edged sword. While losing some players meant a reduced risk of injury during an already tumultuous season, it also left the team vulnerable, with fewer options available for the challenging weeks ahead. Eric Ten Hag watched the players leave, aware that the international break provided a crucial opportunity for reflection. With no matches scheduled until October 19th, the pressure cooker of expectations at Manchester United was momentarily paused, but the underlying tension remained. The board had scheduled meetings to discuss the future of the club and its management, a conversation that was becoming increasingly urgent. Ten Hag understood that the fate of his tenure might depend on the results when play resumed. Back at the training ground, those players who had remained felt the weight of responsibility. They knew that the coming weeks would not just be about recovering physically, but also about stepping up in a way that could help alleviate some of the pressure surrounding Ten Hag. Conversations among teammates grew more intense. They exchanged ideas about tactics and strategies, hoping to solidify their game plan for when they returned to action. One player in particular, Bruno Fernandes, took it upon himself to lead by example. As the captain, he organized informal training sessions, where players would come together to maintain their fitness and sharpen their skills. It was a crucial moment for the squad to bond and reinforce their commitment to one another. They worked on set pieces, pressed each other in small-sided games, and shared light-hearted moments that reminded them of the joy of playing football. As the international fixtures unfolded, the players watched closely from afar. The performances of their teammates became a point of both pride and concern. Would they return invigorated from their exploits, or would the demands of international football take a toll? Mount, who had recently faced criticism for his performances, showed flashes of brilliance in his appearances, leaving his United teammates hopeful that he could find that same form back in Manchester. However, not all news was positive. Reports emerged about injuries suffered by players abroad, adding to the anxiety back home. Some fans began to voice their concerns on social media, questioning the club's strategy and the direction in which they were heading. With every passing day, the scrutiny grew sharper and the pressure mounted not only on the players, but also on Ten Hag. 
As the clock ticked down to the resumption of Premier League action, the squad knew they had a pivotal match ahead, one that could either ignite their season or send them spiraling further into uncertainty. In the days leading up to the game, the players rallied together in their final training sessions. They worked with urgency and focus, knowing that every touch, every pass, and every shot counted. They were determined to turn the tide. When October 19th finally arrived, the atmosphere at Old Trafford was electric. The stands were filled with passionate fans, many holding banners that read, In Ten Hag We Trust, alongside ones that voiced frustration at the team's recent performances. The mix of hope and apprehension was palpable. Would the players rise to the occasion and deliver the performance they so desperately needed? As the match kicked off, the players displayed a renewed sense of unity. They pressed high, moved the ball quickly, and fought for every inch. Mason Mount, buoyed by his international performances, was instrumental, darting between defenders and creating chances. The crowd responded, their chants growing louder as the team began to find its rhythm. Yet the opposition was formidable, and the match ebbed and flowed. 